<laughs> All right. My name is Dick Puddlecock, and I am the most brilliant criminal genius you've never heard of. 700 years ago, I pulled off the biggest job in Christendom. I ripped off the king. Nobody ever got to know about it. That's because the church and the crown, the big men, buried the story in the archives of the bloody exchequer. And I got to see out eternity in this place. <coughs> oh well. That's what happens if you're a tidy body trying to better yourself. You get swived up the arse. Regularly. Oh, come on, boys. Get him. <laughs> Once upon a while, I was a player in the most happenest city in Christendom. Aside from a little criminality, I ran a boozer with my bliss wench, Joanna. Loves them. I had my mates, my gang, the clap had cleared up, and she was trying to make me go straight. Joanna and me saved up, you see. And I started doing a bit of fleecing in the most respectable sense of the world. Took a business trip to Flanders to sell some wool. And I was just about to make us rich when it all went church gone. So, that's what I got for trying to do things lawfully. It wasn't my fault I got chucked in the clink. Here's the reason I got banged up. Money. And a slap-headed nonce whose face was on it. Look at him. Edward I, a.k.a. the Leopard. The Swiver had borrowed money from the Flemings and he hadn't paid it back. Which meant any Englishman who was mug enough to go to Flanders got left to rot. Seven bloody months. Show, sure, uh, what would you be doing if uh, we are to uh, be making you free, Mr. Dick Polycott? Well, I intend to return quietly to England and explain, politely, to the Crown authorities why I should be giving my money back. No, sir, I do not intend to break the law. What changed my mind was what happened when I got home. It went apricot shaped. I sold the wall, all of it. Even that bit that the pig had pissed on. But the swivers banged me up and kept the minker because of the sodding king. Honest, on my mother's burying. You owe me, blondie. I'm going to make you work your lumpy little arse until you pay me back. I'll get you the minker for this wench. I can just burgle somewhere. I am not your bliss wench. Oh, we can flog the pub. It looks like you're doing a tidy business. What have you done to the place, by the way? I must say, I think it's lost a lot of its character. It's not our place anymore. Even with my little change of career, I couldn't manage the taxes. This is the king's land now. Oh, God's balance! What change of career? 
We're going back to the whoring. Oh, what a way! He's good manker, Dick. High class. And you let me down. So he taken my money, my living, and my wench. But this is the story of how I got my revenge on the piss pot king. With a little help from my friends. <laughs> Now I knew my rights. I knew it said in Magna Carta that the king couldn't ponce about the whole time shagging people up the dot in their bum. Or worse to that effect. Although Magna Carta was clearly not worth a fart to the feckin' idiot. Don't write that down. I just want a bit of what's going round, brother. You ever been to Flanders? What are you doing there? What the hell is going on? I'm doorkeeper of Westminster these days, brother. Sold myself out to the leopard. Or at least I would have done if he was actually paying me anything. He owes me Menka as well, you know, five months. Kings are supposed to live in bloody castles. When did this one get to run our cacking faces? I thought he was off swiving the Welsh. Yeah, well, he swived the Welsh. Now he's swiving the Scots. And he's swiving the English to pay for it. Hey! Look. I wouldn't let yourself get so wound up about it, Puddle Piss. We're all the king she bitches now. I want my menka. <laughs> So, let's have a look at this leopard who was swiving us all so soundly. One pious mother swiver with two great loves. Kicking arse and raising money so we could kick more arse. And the common people weren't the only ones getting swived. Adam de Wearfield? Your Majesty sent for me. They're quiet! I'm making a turn. There are some who think it meet that a king of England should beg his purse and his fighting power from foreigners, from camp Italian moneylenders. Gentler, do you think that meet? Uh. Neither do I. Instead, therefore, I have levied a special tax on my lords of 15,000 each, payable in two installments on the Feast of Purification and on Ascension Day. I have warned defaulters will have their pricks cut off and nailed to the market cross in Belly St. Edmunds. Sound financial thinking, sire. Westminster Abbey has the strongest vault in all of Christendom. I wish to use it to store these taxes and sundry other treasures. Tell me about security. The vault is buried the depth of three men underground. The walls are 17 feet thick. The cavity is lined with flint. There are six doors and only one key, which I hold. Who stands guard? Guard? I think I'll take the key. What? No, uh, uh, no. Sire, well, the, the Crown has no jurisdiction in the Abbey. It is its own province. What will my brothers say? Don't blame you. But God guards the vault. To disregard this is blasphemy. Do not presume to question my fidelity to God. In any case, my sins are well taken care of. Return to Westminster, weak man. Right, so this was the setup. Everyone, myself included, was getting well and truly done over by the king. Now, add to this the fact that I was a, a criminal with some criminal associates, 
and multiply this by the fact that His Majesty was shoving thousands of quid's worth of plate and jewels into the vault of Westminster Abbey, guarded by no one but monks, well, you have the beginnings of a scheme, an idea. That's seven going in there. You're actually going to tell me what we're doing here. I've got to get back to work, open some doors. 100,000 quid in there, according to Frescobaldi. My initial idea was to swipe the money as they were carrying it in. But security was obviously... Tight as a bloody gnat's chuff. No chance. Just going to sit there and pay for more dead Scotsmen. Feckin' monks. I was just about to give up and go back to wiping tables when Providence suddenly sent me... Stiffy. Dick? <laughs> well, look at you in your dress with your weirdy hair. <laughs> what are you doing with yourself? Uh, I'm sacristan of Westminster Abbey. <laughs> well, Stiffy used to have this real thing for my sister when we were kids. Always hanging around trying to give her a brooch. And if you got hold of him and put him anywhere near, he'd get a massive... <laughs> what did you say you did? I'm sacristan at Westminster. Meet me at the Chapins tonight. I suddenly got a lot more ambitious. Sacristan. Hmm. So what, that means you're in charge of the vault, does it? Or the lepers, Menka? Well, nominally. Well guarded, is it? Must be. Well, God guards it. And there's plenty of doors, and only one key. Which you've got. No. Well, it's good to see the spots have cleared up. And you're all grown up now, Stiffy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. I command a lot of respect. They think I've sold out to the king. God. <laughs> oh, they hate me. No, I thought that this job would be... I am an ambitious man, Dick. Now they, they watch me whisper. They come in late at night. Oh, this is hell. Why don't you come for a drink at my place? Uh, no, uh, no, I can't. We, we have a very punishing schedule of prayers, penitent. Uh, how's your sister? She's dead. She's well. Oh. Never forgotten you, you know. Really? Well, I thought she disliked me. It's just her way, isn't it? Come on. Come and tope a core at my place. You can see her. I... Uh... Still have the brooch I always wanted to give her. <laughs> oh. I must go. It's even so. I'll see myself out. And I'll have a bleeding good case the joint first, if it, you mug. Christ. From the refectory in the abbey. No, no, no. You, you can't do that, Dick. You can't rip off the church. You'll go to hell. Bollocks to hell, brother. I've been to Flanders. Get back in there and clean those tables, Blondie. There's a spittoon once emptying. Sheriff! Hell can't be any worse than being a ponce in a whorehouse and watching the Sheriff of London swive your bliss, wench. Look, I'm a simple sort, all right? If I make enough menker to get me wank teeth done and... I know... By a couple of pigs, I'll be smiling. I don't want to be doing a big job like that. Me missus would kill me. So would the other bird I'm shagging. Have some bloody ambition, William. Huh? Let's get some of what they've got. Look, I've cased the place. You can't get in from the front. Six doors and no key. So we've got to take the king from behind, which appeals to me. Look, he owes you money anyway. You're just getting what's due. Come on. After you. Oh, I like your pointy hat. And you, sir. If you go, boys. It'd have to be a tunnel. And we'd need a stonemason. Richard the Raker. 
he's dead. On a job? Kind of. He fell through some quitted planks in his privy. Drowned in his own shit. How about Irish Pete? You no, know, he worked on the Abbey. Maybe he's got the plans. And we need someone small to squeeze through and open it up. Hey, old Dick. Oh, this is cosy, isn't it? And we'd need a fence. Of course, everyone knew the best fences in London were our Hebrew brothers, but they've been forced into hiding south of the river. John of Jew Market. Stint your clap, brother, eh? It's New Market. Why don't you have a swing, my little daffodil? So where have you been? Pilgrimage. Ooh! <laughs> you still owe me, you know, for that thing. With the things. What can you do with that? I could shove it up your ass. It's church. It's religious. Not your church. Sure. I'm in mean, a quiet way of business nowadays. You know, just keeping quiet, you know, keeping tidy. Plenty more where that came from. Listen, now, don't get my gut sluiced into Walbrook shit after a little bit of Abbey Silver. How about for all of it? <laughs> I told you already, you know, I got a nice thing going here. I got a lovesome wife. Oh, look at this, she's looking so much clever, eh? <laughs> you know, I got a beautiful new cart. Take you for a drive one day. Pigskin interior. Plus, you don't want to cross the king, you know. Got certain difficulties with his temper. In retrospect, John of Newmarket was probably correct. The leper was probably the baddest king we ever had, and well known for turning his hog out in a variety of interesting ways. At his own daughter's wedding, he beat some poor squire to death. And when a Saracen tried to do him with a poisoned dagger, he ripped the blade out and showed him how to do the job properly. So much for peace in the Middle East. See, he figured he could swipe anyone he wanted if he made up for his sins afterwards. Compensation, penances, crusades and shit. You know, so he wouldn't end up in purgatory or hell. No. Wanker. And if you mind it not, took all the money off the Jews in London, donned them on a sandbank and left them to drown. So for yourself? I am not Jewish. Yeah, fair enough. Thank you. You see, the king doesn't even have to know. The vault's only unshutting twice a year. He's just gonna spend against his contents. Think about it, brother. Money and revenge. We'll be off and away before the old bugger knows a thing. Fair enough. I'll give you 18 for that. So what's your timetable? Dicky, answer me. Who else you got? He was in. But at considerable personal risk. Minister Bloody Abbey. The man's a perfect. He's off his cock. And he's never done the big job in his life. No, but that's precisely why we need you. Look at it like I do. He's a mate, yeah? He's down on his luck. Come on, Irish, we need a chippy. I mean, you fancy a bit of the good life again, don't you? Nope. You were uh, still living with your mum? That's temporary. Only temporary. Indian M. Black M by. Embine, brother. I'm sorry. I'm not going to risk it. I mean, I'd have to be off me head, wouldn't I? <laughs> Do you want some? You know, I love that, man. I've always loved him. If he needs a hand, the swiper's only got the bloody same. 
I mean, my best plan's just feckin' born, darling. Oh, what is the plan? Irish Pete, we need it for muscle alone. Because let's face it, we knew one end of the shovel from the other, but that was about it. So, we knew the stuff was there. We knew the layout. We knew we were going to tunnel. But what we needed more than anything else was information. We needed an inside man. Some gullible, wart-faced baldy who could be turned without too much trouble. Now, my sister died of the plague in 1293. But as Sin Bruno of Querfer would say, they all look the same in the dark. Hildegard, is that you? Stiffy! I want to give you a brooch. Oh, Hildegard. My life is it's so terribly persecuted. I bear the burden of virtue and honesty amongst my brother. Hildegard. Oh, you smell so... <laughs> when we children all used to play together, your aloofness used to break my heart. That, the cruel jibes of your brother. Twas but show. Come, give me a brooch. Oh. Oh, Stiffy. Oh, the girl. <laughs> We need a bit of information. Muckle Johnny Ramage, our tunnel jockey in both senses, and an excellent honey trap. Poor old Stiffy. He was none too pleased about being co-opted. Still, that was his tough cack. Here's the plan I've been working on, so pay attention. Now, the ground outside the Abbey is as hard as nails. Can't get through. Westminster clay. But there is a weak spot. The graveyard. Now, the earth there is nice and soft, because it gets dug up so often. We're going to go down through the corpses. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Let me finish. Down through the corpses. And then straight across, using the wood from the coffins as supports. We get to the wall of the vault, here, and there's another weak spot. The flint cavity is half as thick at the graveyard end. An Irish breaks through. Oh, well, sounds simple. So what about the monks? What about getting the stuff out? What about getting in there in the first bloody place? <laughs> Why don't you just let him finish? Bar mitzvah, boy. Thanks. So... According to Stiffy, the date to make the hit is May the 3rd. The feast of the invention of the cross. Now, the monks leave the abbey, have an enormous parade through the sea, down to the nunnery in Bishopsgate, with their bit of the old true cross. The place will be empty, so we're going to make barrels. Seven of them. Will used to be a cooper. We'll deliver the barrels, telling the monks that we're picking up beer from their brewery. Now, six of the barrels are empty. The last one contains Irish peat and Muckle John Rangers. Now, when the monks have gone, Irish starts to dig and makes the tunnel. We arrive, take the stuff. Sorry to piss on your pigeon here, but I've worked it out. It's going to take at least 18 hours to tunnel down there. The brothers will be back too soon. Right. Stiffy 
said the monks have a feast after the parade. Another one in here, please, Tinkle. We'll deliver the barrels the day before. We'll say it's wine for the knees up. Yeah, but what about the religious side? What about going to hell? Oh, yeah, he's right. Can we just stick to the matter in hand? Johnny makes sure the coast is clear. Mm -hmm. An Irish makes a start on the digging. So what about... What? I'm going to say, what about the earth that they dig out? We can't keep it all in the barrel. Right, um... Right, we do the thing with the barrels and whatnot. Monk's head off. Ramage, where's the habit? Inside are two sacks. As Irish digs, he puts the earth into the sacks. When the coast is clear, Ramage slips up, empties the sacks from underneath the habit, kicks it in with the rest of the dirt. Easy. Thanks, mate. We get there when the monks are gone and help with the tunnel. I'm going to ask Joe to do the catering. When the monks are back, we get them cat-faced on wine so they won't notice us loading up the loot in the barrel. Day after, Newmarket picks them up in a spanking new cart. We keep them in the cellar here. Tidy. Uh, why does the manga get kept here, then? We keep it till we know no one's twig, right? Then we divvy it up nice and quiet. Nice and quiet. Safe. We've got to be safe. The important thing we don't spend it all like Biffords and draw attention to ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Biffords! <laughs> Here! 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 Look, Joe, for God's sake, it's just one last job. I'll be your rich lover, we can retire. Fit chance, Blondie. I know you, you'll bollocks it up. Mullock! You steal from a church boy, you go to hell. Or purgatory or something. Oh, don't you bloody start. If you don't care about me, why are you bothered? Stint your clap. Ha! Look, Joe, why don't you come in with us? You've got brains. You go to hell if you like, Dick. I'm not coming with you. Clearly, you don't want me to get rich. Clearly, you'd rather be a bloody prosy for the rest of your life! I've sinned. It is, uh, 17 and a half years since my last confession. Really? As long as that? Yeah. Listen, could you tell me what I could, uh, expect to get for theft? Well, thou shalt not steal. That's what it says. That's what what says? The Bible. Oh, yeah? It depends whether you repent. It depends whether you're shriven. What about if I ripped off a church? Again. If I stole from a church, that could be more serious. Yeah, I thought it might be. Look, um, between ourselves, there are ways, you know, of navigating. You could do a penance, a pilgrimage, although it would rather need to be a large one. Tour of foreign monasteries, perhaps. Or you could simply pay a little towards the Crusades, and if you wanted, maybe I could oversee the exchange. Is this true? It's what the king does. Oh, thanks, Father. You've really helped. You can buy it off. All of it. Even the whoring, probably. Priest said so. Go and check for yourself. We can all go off on a nice little tour of German monasteries and we're tidy. And you're going to pinch the lot? Huh? As much as we can handle. All right. You get one last chance. I'm in. Need someone to make sure you don't bollocks it up. I'm not going to bollocks it up. I love you. Can we have sex? Maybe afterwards, when you're rich. The last piece in the stained glass window. My bliss wench, Joanna. So, Will did his barrels. Joe did some sewing. I mean, you can only dress it up so far. This was about as exciting as the lead-up got. Tidy, tidy, tidy.
Those blokes look vicious. Calm down. Like a man who's thorough. Gentlemen, you are in serious danger of cacking this right up. I'm dying for a piece. Go and have one then. Thank you. Hey, approach giver approaching. Please, I've got to be quiet. We're starting solemn prayers. Oh, where have we got to be quiet? Give us a bloody hand and we'll shut up the sooner. No, I've done what you asked. I gave you the plans, I cleared the churchyard, left them to grow the grass high. I can't be seen to be having anything to do with this. Shh. That's better. Is he? Oh, stop that! Please, please, stop doing that on that stone, please. Can I be left to be open? Oh! Oh! That man is a Jew! He's from Newmarket. So what? Now who's the one who's making the noise? I can't trust the Jews. They have no sense of morals, only money. The right people then, ain't he? Oh, he looked up on the cross. It'll all go wrong. The king finds out that we're in it with Jews. It'll be even worse. Uh, I should tell my brothers. I don't think that'd be wise. You'll get your cut and give away as many brooches as you like. Nobody will ever know that you were involved. But if you tell your brothers, it's all going to go wrong. It's not going to go wrong. What if it all goes wrong? Why would it go wrong? I don't know. I tend to have a habit of balancing up. You're not going to balax it up, Dick. How long have we known each other? Long time. Since you were young and pretty. <laughs> Tell me what we're going to do afterwards. We're going to go on a pilgrimage so we don't end up in hell. And then we can buy a lovesome big castle in Flanders. No, not Flanders. Or Malmo. Or Lubeck. Sweden's full of giants, apparently. And I'm going to have a lovely old age. And you're going to get fat and keep bees and look after me. And it's all going to be extremely nice. Come to bed, Blondie. You can have a bit on account. Him to be a little uh, bonier than that. We're gonna have to shift him. We need the wood. I'm not touching that. I mean, what if it bursts? <coughs> Stop that. Or you'll set me off. <coughs> <coughs> 
Oh, oh this is really fucking glamorous, isn't it? Oh. Hide, hide, hide. The biggest pile of fucking watch and mank in the bleeding bloody world. <laughs> the monks are gonna be back in another hour. We're ahead of schedule. That's water. Jesus Christ, it isn't. Yeah. <coughs> you go. Well, fuck off. You mark it. Go on. I'm not going. Will, you go. Um, jo Johnny, why don't you have the honour of being the first through the hole, eh? What, me? Yeah. Oh, don't mind if I do. That's it, Marcel. Oh! Ow! What can you see, Ramage? Oh. Ramage! Oh, God. Yeah, what can you see? Well, uh, I don't know, I think... What? What have you found? Well, there's no bloody Menka in here. Can you see the Menka? Oh! Oh, my Rub God. Come on, what is it? Can you see it? Oh, my God! <sighs> So it's a suspect. Doesn't make a difference. The bolts on the other side. It's just less of a pleasant working environment. Dick, I'm sorry to be the voice of reason, but it does make a difference. It means we've got another wall to get through and not enough time to get through it. All the monks are going to hear. They're not going to hear. Dick, it's right underneath the bloody refectory. What time is it? They're back. and go home. I'm inclined to agree with the Red Sea pedestrian here. I wish you'd stop taking a bloody piss. Church, come on, let's think. The tribes of Israel have been on the go thousands of years and have produced scholars and poets, musicians, so scientists in Ireland. What the fuck is Ireland famous for? <laughs> up now. We're that close. They're near us, mate. We don't need the risk. Ireland is famous for bogs and stupid oh, people. Oh, 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 Ballocks! Oh, oh, mm. Ballocks! All right, then. 
What a shame. Wait. Irish, you got any of that henbane? No, Dad. It's a good idea. Toy! Right. We're gonna drug the monks. Give us an hour and start work. Come on, brothers! What's he talking about? Drug the monks? monks. Let's go. Um, minor change of plan. We're gonna have to drop the wine. I'd rather not talk about it. It's a long story. What? Did you know that was a bloody suspect? No. Anyway, change of plan. We're gonna knock all your brothers out. I thought you were just gonna get them drunk. The amount of loud bangs we're making, they'll need to be dead to the world. <sighs> no, listen. No, just don't drink the wine, but make sure they do. Put it in the wine. Get it changed. Come in. Is it ready? Is that the turbot? Is that the turbot? Stink your clap, Dick. Of course it's a sodding turbot. Is that the wine? Why? Quan gloriosa ad virginem, in nomine patri, et fili, et spiritus sancti, sacalai, sacalorum. Amen. Noise. It may surprise you to learn that I don't go to many parties. There's parties in the Bible in there? Yeah. What would Jesus do? Accustomed as I am, to, uh, God Almighty. What a lovely day we've had. He's dying on his arse. Put more drugs in. We don't want to kill him, Dick. A little cloudy during the benediction. But it soon brightened up. Uh... Uh, <clears throat> uh, a toast, brothers, to St. Helena. The inventor of the true cross. Oh, no. And the founder, St. Francis of Assisi. Francis of Assisi. He could talk to the animals. We're Benedictines. And to St. Boniface. And his relic.
Go on, Uncle. Go on. He's almost through. I've sent new market down already. Great. Thanks, brother. Do you want to come? Oh, we're going through a cesspit. Right. Wait till they've all passed out and go back to the cheapies. Time to, uh... Me, Dad. Yeah, right. I'm finding this very nerve-wracking. fingers. There's 12 of them. A doomsday book. <laughs> well, you can wipe my arse with that. It's ours now. <laughs> you know <where> <laughs> What have you done in the name of money? Oh, God. Oh, Peter, forgive me. Oh, my brethren, sister, we'll be damned. Hell awaits us, miserable, sacrilegious sinners that we are. We must pray. Oh, we must pray. We must implore forgiveness. But we're going to hell. You're not going to go to hell, John. You can buy it off. You cannot. Yes, you can. The priest told me. That's just another way for my greedy brothers to make more money. Do you seriously think that God would allow you to get away with this? Rui, that's it. I'm out. That's it. Thank you. Thank you very cackin' much. I pray, sir. I, I will pray, and, and, and then that'll be all right, won't it? We'll divvy up now, thank you. Look, we've got to stick to the plan. I don't care. Look, don't take any notice what Siffy says. We'll be off in Lubeck soon. Doing a nice, tidy little tour of foreign monasteries. It won't do you any good. I don't like foreign food. I like eggs. Right. Take what you can carry, then. What? I want me fair cut. Well, you can't have your fair cut, you bug-eyed mick. You fucking cheating baby-eating bastard. Did you call me, you stick <laughs> 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 I'm gonna plan. Come on. Together, together, you guys call. Come back. What are you doing? Got a birthday. Got a birthday. Come on. Hurry. Slow down. We're gonna love that. Quick.
can always rely on a Christian to fuck things up. It's all the more for the rest of us. Hey, come on, smile. We just ripped off the bloody king, eh? Hey. Come on, boy. Hey, give us a smile, eh? Hey? <laughs> <laughs> We meet at the Cheapins in the Seven Nights. Can I take the girdle of the Virgin Mary? Mrs. of Newmarket would just love it. The irony. <laughs> All right, but don't spend the money you've got in your pockets. Okay. You think where you'll end up, Dick? Newmarket's going to pick up the car tomorrow. Get your brothers to help him load it. That one's yours. No, I can't. It's up to you. We're square now. If you change your mind, Stiffy, don't spend the money. Once I had a child, he was wilder. What the hell is that? Something to miss, brother. Oh, your bloody or pimented wank teeth. Don't spend the money, I said. I know, I, I just thought, why the bloody hell not, eh? <clears throat> it's all right, I'll just, I'll keep me total shut. Fet fucking chance. Is Mr. of Newmarket. He'll be here. Once he hears the clinking of tiny coins. <sighs> oh, go on. Yeah? Yeah. Just the one. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's done that, this wench. Yeah. Gold. Yeah. I'll catch it. New market. No, no, he's one of us. He's the one who picked the cacking barrels up in his arse in new pissing cart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is a new one. <laughs> Give me me grub. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, Monsieur Dicky Publican! <laughs> Sorry for the latest, my son, but something came up. <laughs> hey! Oh! Double crossing! Son of a sea bitch! Where's my money? Take your money, where's your money? Oh. 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 You mother driver! Oh, not the son of a Mrs. of Newmarket called a sergeant who found two dozen bags of silver florins and the Virgin Mary's girdle, which, as everybody knew, was the only one in the world and was kept in the vault at Westminster Abbey. They unshutted the vault 
The leopard found out, and the cack hit the fan. Where's my money? You nick, son. Who are you? Who the fuck are you, really? I'm a Jew. All right. I don't like Jews. They do things like this. <laughs> I don't like kings. They do things like this. <laughs> Did you know that? Jesus was a Jew. And Jesus was born a Jew. Just like I was born a mewling, puking baby with no understanding of the world. We none of us are born that which we are to become. So, who were your brothers in this? Oh, job's half done. Newmarket sang like a willow warbler. Hey. Yeah. Johnny Ramage. Stephanie. Right, we can off escape, can we? Come on, we got into the tightest vault in London. A place like this should be too high. Irish, you brought your tools, right? Yeah, I brought me tools. Really? No, you stupid piss pot. John, think you can wiggle through? Oh, go on! Go on, John! Go on! Go on, Ramage! Oh, Ramage! Go on! Ramage! Go on, go on, go on, go on. Go on. Give us a hand! Ramage! What about us? Ramage! Ramage! You! Off me, Michael Well, well, brother, kept me trouble shut, mate. Bugger, bugger, bugger. I was quickly running out of options. So I claimed sanctuary. I'm claiming sanctuary! Very useful tool for blokes who want to run work. If you can get to a church, you've got 30 days before anyone can touch you. Theoretically. And at least I could confess, be forgiven, and not end up in bloody hell. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. It has been, um, three nights since my last shrift. Let me guess. Theft of sacred property. You too? Off -scaped. Well, claiming sanctuary won't do any good, Stiffmeister. They're about to crack the door down. Bastards! Jesus, a spoon, we were so bloody close. Bloody new market. Sorry, Stiffy. Sorry. Sorry, I'm, I'm so sorry. It was a good plan, though. Indeed. And, personally speaking, the best part about it was that you were, you are, obviously, still a complete Idiot. Hey. <laughs> New Market's gonna pick up the car tomorrow. Get your brothers to help him load it. That one's yours. No, I can't. It's up to you.
others. Thank you, brother. That means a lot. You rotten bastard, Stiffy. It was never about you, Dick. It was about the church and the crown. And you were just a helpful irrelevancy who provided the means. Where's my money? I seem to remember that we are protected by a little thing called the benefit of clergy. Which means that if you don't let us go, you are booking yourself a donkey ride to damnation. Now I can buy that off, as I buy my other sins off. Yes, you could do. But the Pope would excommunicate you. I have a letter here from him threatening to do so. If you ever interfere in the affairs of the Abbey again. <laughs> Forgive us if we don't. <laughs> In my father's house, there are many rooms. It's a big house, Dick. It always wins. And nobody will ever call me Stiffy again. You can pardon me, though, can't you? I don't... You can forgive me, you bad sort! Stiffy! Why did you do this? Why suffer me to spill so much blood in the name of money? Well, apart from the obvious. Because it made me want to puke. To think of your mates swiving my woman. Because you owned her. Because you took all my money. Because you took my pub. Because you probably didn't even know a bloody thing about it. And you wouldn't care even if you did. We can't screw people forever. Sooner or later, they bite back. Only if they have teeth. This woman has a petition signed by my sheriff in London, by my doctor, by my apothecary, and sundry others known to my person, pleading for clemency. I will extend my clemency to her. If you tell me where the money is. I don't know where the money is, I haven't seen it. I will extend my clemency if you swear to the monk's involvement. Tell me exactly what they did and who did it. Dick! You are a little man. You are not a player. You are insignificant, irrelevant in this matter. Your life means nothing to me, one way or the other. Just tell me what the important people did, and I will extend my clemency to you both. It was all me. Tick! I came up with a plan. I executed it. I dug. I hid the money. I gave it out amongst my friends to be generous. Nobody else knew a thing about it. Not her. Not the monks. Not anyone. Is this wise? A little man did it. Very well. 
Kiss him. Make up, please. Joanna. You are banished from our kingdom. What are you going to do with him? Dick! Bye, Joe. What they did was, they dragged me through the streets of London during the Lord Mayor's parade. Then they flayed my back off. You should have seen how red that went. And then I was hanged. Not quite what I'd had in mind, to be honest. House always wins, essentially. Just got to take the small victories where you can. He didn't get his money back. Joanna got away. I haven't seen her around here. And then there is the small comfort of knowing that the name of Richard Puddlecott will be known throughout history as the finest criminal mind of his generation. And at least in a place like this, you're never alone. Hell is other people. season continues on Thursday with a look inside the medieval mind at nine. Next tonight, black comedy in The Hour of the Pig. Take a trip into the medieval mind with me, Michael Wood. Follow the story of one woman and her neighbours through the Great Famine and the 